Aquaman 2018 film review. Given the uneven quality of its DC Extended Universe entries, Warner Brothers comes pretty close to giving its Target Comics audience what it wants in Aquaman, starring Jason Momoa and Nicole Kidman. This part underwater set superhero origin story is a mess and even Jason Momoa's good old boy persona can't revive it. Finally, after all these years of waiting to see another great DC movie from start to finish, we have Aquaman. From Zack Snyder's terribly moody tone with lack of character to back it up and overly bombarded narratives, we now get a DC film that knows how to have a good time with itself in a way that feels right for the tone that is set. Admittedly this is significantly campier than any of the previous installments that have proceeded before it, but it works here. At least for me, it did, if a light-hearted, campy and relatively self-aware film isn't someone's cup of tea then I would recommend probably avoiding Aquaman. Aquaman is a 2018 American superhero film based on the DC Comics character of the same name, produced by Warner Brothers Pictures. DC Entertainment and Peter Safran Productions, and distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures, it is the sixth film in the DC Extended Universe, DCEU. The film was directed by James Wan, from a screenplay by David Leslie Johnson and Goldrick and Mobile. It stars Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry by Aquaman, who sets out to lead the underwater kingdom of Atlantis and stop his half-brother, King Orm, from uniting the seven underwater kingdoms to destroy the surface world. Amber Heard, Willem Dafoe, Patrick Wilson, Dolph Lundgren, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Tamiera Morrison, and Nicole Kidman appear in supporting roles. Development began in 2004 but did not gain traction until Man of Steel was released in 2013. In August 2014, Bill and Kurt Johnstad were hired to write competing scripts. WAN signed on as director in April 2015, and in July 2016, the film moved forward with Bill's screenplay. The main cast was confirmed through 2016 and early 2017. Principal photography began in Australia in May 2017, taking place at Village Roadshow Studios on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, with additional production teams in Canada, Italy and Morocco. Filming concluded the following October. Several vendors provided visual effects, ranging from high-detail hair simulations to the creation of CGI animals and locations.
time explaining movie plot. In 1985 Maine, lighthouse keeper Thomas Curry rescues Atlanta, the queen of the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, during a storm. They fall in love and have a son named Arthur, who has the power to communicate with sea creatures. When Atlantean soldiers sent by King Orvax, the ruler of Atlantis arrived to retrieve Atlanta, who fled her arranged marriage in Atlantis, she defeats them but is forced to leave her family to protect them from her people. She promises to return when safe to do so and goes back to Atlantis, entrusting her advisor, Nuidis Volko, to train Arthur. Becoming a skilled warrior, Arthur rejects Atlantis upon learning that Atlanta was executed by Orvax for loving a human and having a half-breed son. In the present, one year after Steppenwolf's defeat, Arthur confronts pirates hijacking a Russian Akula-class submarine. Their leader is killed in a failed attempt to kill Arthur, and his son David vows revenge. The present King Ormarius, Orvax's son, who is now Atlantis's new ruler after his father passed away and Arthur's younger half-brother. Convinces King Nereus of Zebel to help unite Atlantis and destroy the surface world for polluting the oceans. If Orm unites all four kingdoms, he will receive the title of Ocean Master, commander of the most powerful force on the planet. Nereus agrees to help after they are attacked by the hijacked submarine. Nereus' daughter Mera, betrothed to Orm, refuses to aid them and requests Arthur's help. Arthur accompanies her back to Atlantis, where Volko urges him to find the Trident of Atlan, a magic artifact of Atlantis' first ruler, to reclaim his rightful place as king. They are ambushed by Orm's men, and Arthur is captured. Orm blames him for Atlanta's death and nearly kills him in a duel before Mera rescues him. Arthur and Mera journey to the fallen kingdom of the deserters hidden under the Sahara Desert. Where the trident was forged, and unlock a holographic message that leads them to Sicily, Italy, where they retrieve the trident's coordinates. Orm gives David a prototype Atlantean battle suit to kill Arthur, imprisons Volko, and coerces the kingdom of the fishermen to pledge their allegiance to him by killing their king and forcing the queen and princess to accept. It is also revealed that Orm hired David and his father to hijack the Russian submarine, which is the same one that attacked Atlantis earlier to win Nereus's support. An armored David rechristens himself as Black Manta and injures Arthur, but Arthur manages to defeat David. At their destination, Arthur and Mera fend off amphibious monsters of the trench, and a wormhole transports them to an uncharted sea at the center of the Earth. They are reunited with Atlanta, who was sacrificed to the trench for Arthur's illegitimate birth 20 years ago, but had survived and escaped to the uncharted sea, alive and well. Arthur faces the Kara then, a mythical leviathan and keeper of the trident, and voices his determination to protect both Atlantis and the surface, reclaiming the trident, which grants him control over the seven seas. Orm leads his army against the kingdom of the Brine to declare himself Ocean Master, while Arthur, with Mera, Kara then, and the Trench, lead an army of marine creatures against him. 
Orm's followers embrace Arthur as the true king upon learning that he wields Atlan's trident. Arthur defeats Orm but spares his life, and Orm accepts his imprisonment after discovering that Arthur rescued their mother. Atlanta reunites with Thomas as promised, while Arthur ascends to the throne. In a mid credit scene, David is rescued by Dr. Stephen Shin, a marine scientist and conspiracy theorist obsessed with Atlantis, and agrees to lead Shin there in exchange for help in his revenge on Arthur. I hope you would have enjoyed the plot. However, Aquaman premiered in London on November 26, 2018, and was released in the United States on December 21. It grossed $1.148 billion worldwide, making it the highest-grossing DCEU film, the highest-grossing film based on a DC Comics character, the fifth-highest-grossing film of 2018 and the 24th-highest-grossing film of all time. The film received praises for its visual effects, production design, tone, action sequences, Momoa's performance, and Wan's direction but its plot and runtime were criticized. An animated miniseries set after the film, Aquaman, King of Atlantis, aired from October 14 to October 28, 2021, while a live-action sequel film, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, is set to be released on March 17, 2023. The film received generally mixed to positive reviews from critics, praise went toward Wan's direction and Momoa's performance, alongside the film's visual effects, production design, and tone. However, the plot and runtime were criticized. Review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes reports that 65% of 410 critics gave the film a positive review, with an average rating of 6 out of 10. The website's critical consensus reads, Aquaman swims with its entertainingly ludicrous tide, offering up CGI superhero spectacle that delivers energetic action with an emphasis on good old-fashioned fun. Metacritic surveyed 50 critics and assigned a weighted average score of 55 out of 100, indicating mixed or average reviews.